Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Side Project Podcast. Yes. Oh, God. Tastes like glory. Tastes like glory, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> How is everybody doing, man? You guys know how it goes. (laughs) Hope everybody's doing well. I'm not going to waste any time here today because I've got a lot of things that I want to talk about with my guest this week, who is a Marvel fan. He is a DC fan. He is a Star Wars fan, a Power Rangers fan, and he puts his love for these fandoms to good use, cosplaying the likes of the amazing Spider-Man, Superman, the Batman, and so many more. Starring in NerdBot Studios' Qui-Gon Legends series as General Grievous, alongside his work as the White Ranger and Lord Dragon in Crimson Visions Shattered Past, I've had the pleasure of working with him in the past, and he is a previous cosplay of the week. Let's give a warm welcome to Hands Together for Corruption Cosplay. Yes. <laughs> here I am. How's it going, man? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I am excited to be here. Yes, I've been dude. Wanting to be on here for a, for a while, so I'm stoked. Thank you, man. Yes, dude. We did we did the uh, Batman shoot together, man, and we did not know each other before that, but when we met, it all just kind of clicked. We had a great time, and uh, we we both have podcasts. We both uh, love all these different fandoms. We started talking about it. It was just laughs and a good time, and uh, and we we mentioned making this happen. Uh, so I'm glad that it finally happened, dude. And you've got a lot of cool projects that you're a part of right now. You're an amazing cosplayer, and we're definitely going to dive into some of that. But before we do so, I haven't talked about it yet on the pod so let's talk about dr strange and the multiverse of madness dude corruption attended the premiere of this film and he did so in character in your in your dr strange cosplay so i guess we are going to talk about your cosplay very briefly because i just wanted to mention <laughs> that uh your dr strange cosplay is awesome and it's up on the screen right now for people that are that that are watching um specifically lo- taking a look at the photos that were done by uh art hero photo these photos man you uh art hero Hero's edits, his his photo in general, phenomenally done, dude. Kudos, I love it. They're so they're so well done, man. And I just wanted to bring yeah, that up oh, since thanks, we are man. talking about Doctor Strange. This is these are really 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 well done. Sometimes just can't help myself. For anybody that's tuning in right now, I do want to let you know that uh, we do have. It seems like we have a little bit of a delay when between me and corruption when we talk, like a two second delay. I may edit some of that, you know, best that I can in editing. But just bear with us if there's like you know if we talk over each other or something. Seems to be a little bit of a delay. So. So this movie, man, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness has Marvel fans extremely divided from what I've been seeing online. You either loved it or you hated it almost. I don't know if there's an in-between, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's really hard to see if there's any kind of mid-ground on this one. It's, it's, uh, I know that personally, I really, really liked it. Um, uh, I had a great time with it. I thought it was almost better than the first Doctor Strange um, oh wow that's a that's a big I one i thought that one was good i know yeah <laughs> the first doctor strange is amazing um obviously because i cosplay him all the time but i yeah. the second one for me just hits like a whole other level like emotion wise um mm-hmm. and that i think really connected for me that i really like just let let's just go let's just let's just go off the bat i know people usually do like ratings and everything like at the end after after they talk about it but you know what man just go 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 right on it i mean what would you rate this movie i mean what were your overall thoughts on the movie let's go right out the bat with a rating uh probably i'd probably give it a an eight out of 10, if I was going to do it on a, on a scale, I would give it an eight out of 10. There's definitely some parts of the movie that feel, um, you know, a little, a little rocky writing wise, Mm -hmm. and they don't quite match up to what the, what the rest of the movie's doing. But I think that those parts are so small that the overall story shines through for me a lot more. Nice. No, and I I can respect that. And the reason I say it that way is because yes, this movie has a lot of people divided. And I thought that this would make for a great episode. Uh, as everybody who tunes into my show knows that I'm a giant Marvel fan. Uh, I, I often get called a Marvel fanboy. Uh, people often tell me, are you always shitting on DC and, and, and loving on Marvel. So the people that, that, uh, that, that say those things are going to be in for a surprise here today because, um, 
I didn't like Multiverse of Madness as much as I thought that I would. And my rating is gotta be, I, I can't decide, people know I'm very indecisive. I can't decide 100%, but I would say my rating somewhere between a six and a seven, which is crazy even for me because I often rate Marvel movies pretty high. Like I, I'll admit it. I, I'm I, like, it's strange because a lot of people didn't like Eternals and I actually was a big fan of the Eternals. Did you, did you like Eternals or no? Uh, no, I, I was very, See? uh, bored there we go. <laughs> throughout that movie. See? Yep. There we go. Strange. I don't know. No yeah. pun intended when I say strange, but strange. <laughs> I, I absolutely loved Eternals. And then here I am not, not liking, uh, Doc, uh, Dr. Strange, and the multiverse of madness as much as I thought it was. And a lot of people I see that are going around on the internet and everything on the internet and everything, they seem to say like, they're always like, oh, people didn't like Multiverse of Madness because they expected more cameos. Like, I see that being a bullet point in a lot of people's arguments. And while mm. I understand where those people are coming from when they say that they feel like that's why people didn't like it, my reasonings for liking it, although that that is maybe something that pops into my mind, and I'll explain that, but my reasoning for not liking it as much as I thought I would is actually different from what I see a lot of people saying, and that's maybe just a personal thing for me, I come to realize that maybe I don't like Sam Raimi as a director as much as I thought I did. And that's where people often tell me that argue against this is, um, it's not just Sam though. It's also, you've got to look at the writing. You know, if there was executive meddling, which there was executive mm -hmm. meddling, there was Very 40, so. 40 minutes of this movie was cut. So I, I feel like that hinders, um, you know, possibly, Sam's direction as well, you know, if it wasn't his decision to cut those 40 minutes, what could have been in those in those 40 minutes that we didn't get to see, you know? And maybe that would change my opinion on it as well if I would have been able to see that 40 minutes of extra footage. But my reasoning for not liking it is more uh this had a very early 2000s feel to it. And mm. some may like that and some may not like that. Did you get an early 2000s feel from this as well or is that just me? No, I think that there's a little bit of that there. It definitely comes across like with the Sam Raimi stylings, I think. Right. Um, right. And that's one of the main reasons I really liked this movie is because of all of the very Raimi esque stuff uh -huh. going on in the movie. Um, and I think I just enjoyed that being in the Marvel universe more than uh -huh. anything else. Uh, right. And I can understand it why is, people it is wouldn't nostalgic. like that because Sam Raimi's yeah. And, and there's a, there's an element of Raimi that doesn't, work for everybody. Uh, and right. I think it has a lot to do with the horror uh, elements of stuff. Like some people right. weren't probably prepared for that in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, Sam Raimi, I'm in like, <laughs> at first I, I was, at first I mm -hmm. felt the same exact way throughout. Like if anybody tuned into any pre, I covered Dr. Strange so many different times. Every time there was rumors or any speculation, <laughs> I talked about it. I covered it. I was so hyped for all of this. And, uh, and I was actually pretty stoked to see Sam, Sam Raimi return, you know, because I am a fan of the, uh, the old Spider-Man movies and everything, Tobey Maguire and all that. So I was definitely uh, excited for that, but maybe as time has gone on, I just, um, maybe I guess the way I felt was like, I don't know if I like this type of direction today. Maybe I liked it back mm. then. It felt, it felt good back then because maybe we also didn't have really anything else to compare it to. Now we have like 12 years of Marvel movies that have taken different directions. And then here comes Sam Raimi and he puts his very Sam Raimi stamp on it. But aside from just, I don't want to just shit on Sam Raimi because a lot of people do say like, it's also the writing. And I do want to talk about the writing because you, you mentioned something about, um, you did see some some holes in the writing, some things that you you maybe oh, yeah. could have been better. And what what was that for for you? I mean, was it was it dialogue choices? Was it scripting choices? I mean, where where did um, you feel like something could have been better in the writing? Definitely scripting choices. I think like one of the things that I wanted out of this movie was a lot more multiverse stuff. Right, um, I agree. And you know, they end up only going to like. I don't know how far we can get into spoilers on this. Uh, but oh yeah, by the way, I think well, I think everybody, locations. I think everybody tuning in right now. I didn't, I didn't get this. I didn't say it in the beginning. I usually do, but spoiler alert. Obviously, like yeah. this is going to be a review of Multiverse of Madness. This is a spoiler. So if you haven't haven't watched it, uh, don't don't turn away. Continue watching the episode. Timestamps are in the description on YouTube as well as on Spotify, and you can skip to the uh, to the other stuff that we talk about after the Multiverse of Madness if you haven't seen it. But spoiler alert. My bad. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh no worries. No worries. <laughs> um, so 
I like now that I can talk about them. Uh, yeah. The whole middle section of the movie, the Illuminati. Like, I think that that like that's the part that loses me a lot. Um, I love all the characters in it, but I think that that part derails what's going on with Doctor Strange and uh, a few of the other characters story wise. Um, it does give you like, they do give you the backstories there and stuff, but I think the Illuminati themselves and all of their death scenes were like sort of unnecessary to the plot. <laughs> I, I kind of agree I see it's, it's the Illuminati is something that I both liked and didn't like. I was expecting it before they even started kind of teasing it in trailers. I did a, I did a lot of episodes where I spoke about it, where I, I speculated on what could happen. I thought the lineup for the Illuminati was going to be a little bit different, but I mean, it also makes sense. You know, not everything's going to be exactly how the comics are. They got to change a few things here and there. I both liked the Illuminati in this, in this movie, their appearances and, both disliked it um i just kind of felt like uh, how do i say it like what 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 did i dislike here i kind of understand that they killed them off so fast because they had to make wanda you know she's the scarlet witch now they had to show that she's the almighty she's extremely powerful look at everything that she can do you know i get mm. that but then at the same time it's like the illuminati is made up of, I guess we'll, we'll keep it with not comic accuracy, just what this movie is in this Illuminati. They're kind of made up of some of the strongest in, in the universe, or I guess the multiverse, you know, uh, yeah. like Cap, Captain Marvel is supposed to be extremely, you know, extremely, extremely strong. Uh, uh, Captain, uh, Carter, I don't know. If, I mean, she's still kind of Captain America as she's strong enough. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Scarlet Witch, in my opinion, could take on Captain Carter for sure. But yeah, then you've got like there's... even Professor X, Black Bolt. Black Bolt could have just screamed and done it. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 like, why did he about... just? Why did he wait? Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I mean. Like, I feel like they would have. I don't know. They should have done more. But at the same time, I get it. I'm like conflicted. And then let's talk about how they introduced. Uh, I mean, first of all, John Krasinski as 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 fan, uh, Mr. Fantastic. Did you like it or didn't you like it? Uh, I liked it. I, I like John Krasinski as the character. I think he fits right. really well. Um, Me and too. That's in my plans. So. <laughs> oh, nice, dude! Nice. Yes. Yeah, uh, I yes. can see that happening for like, you. Though. You you have a good look for that. Yeah, I was like, ooh, that's mm -hmm. a it's a nice suit. You know, it's a yeah. nice suit. I gotta have yeah. that blue and black. It is. Uh, I just love the material right. choices for it and everything. Yes, um, me too, but, dude. Boy, boy, how did they, they make him look really stupid though in this movie? <laughs> yes, they introduced <laughs> him as the smartest man alive, and then he instantly tells uh, Wanda basically how to overcome Black Bolt within a second. <laughs> yep. Yeah, <laughs> he like, gives her the tools. <laughs> that? I don't, I don't know why he would do it, but he did yeah. it. I'm the smartest man alive, Reed Richards. Of the Fantastic Four. I do want to touch on something you did mention, which I didn't expect from from you actually to say uh, that it wasn't really a multiverse movie, and that's actually one of my my bullet points that I have is I felt like if you're going to call it multiverse of madness, it should be absolutely chaotic throughout multiverses. That's what I was just expecting. Yes. That's what they made it seem. That's what they made it seem like they were leading up to with No Way Home going into Multiverse of Madness. That's what the trailers kind of uh, made it made it tease. The, it's in the name itself. And then in reality, they only went to like maybe two or three different uh, universes. If you're not counting the fact that they just skimmed through a bunch when America and, and Doctor Strange were pushed through the multiverses yeah. and they were going through all of them. Really, I think the multiverse of madness just caters to the fact that Wanda wants America Chavez or rather her powers so she can go to, uh, to, to, to be with her kids. But it's not even so much that she wants to travel even the multiverse to find her kids. It's just like one. It's just like, it's just like one universe that she has her sights set yeah. on. Like she found, she found the one she wanted and that's the only one she's going to. Yeah. So it's still not really a multiverse movie in my personal opinion. And then that's where a lot of the internet's like, well, that's where people are just complaining and you just wanted to see cameos and a lot more multiverses. I mean, yes and no. It's like, yeah, I mean, they named it multiverse of madness. So I was expecting multiverses like yeah am i am i wrong for that no i don't think so i one of the things that i think is 
on on my end, I think that there's definitely a lack of going to other multiverses. And I think that the one like Marvel has already done a good, a really good multiverse story um, right. that satiated what I wanted from this. And that's the what if show, like the final two episodes of what if both like do the multiverse, like jumping around stuff like the entire show really um, nails. I think what this movie should have been doing like really well. Uh, and I, and I, and I get it on both sides. I don't think you can do a multiverse with a Sam Raimi type story sometimes because Sam Raimi is very like close to the characters and he has to like, like that's his really nail down their emotions and stuff. Yeah. And that's his style of writing and how he directs and stuff. So keeping it a little bit more focused makes sense in that way. Um, but titling it multiverse of madness, I think was, uh, setting him up for failure. What is grief? If not love, persevering. Something that I did like, though, throughout this movie is I, I really did like Wanda. I loved Wanda's arc. I loved Scarlet Witch. I thought she did a great job. I was very interested in that. I've always loved her. How did you feel about the WandaVision uh, series? Did you did you love that, that series? Like all of the Disney Plus shows so far, I love the first like six episodes of the show and then the final two kind of fall flat. Um, but I think it's just because they devolve a lot into the main Marvel endings, which is hero has to defeat bad guy with similar powers. Um, There's a lot of lasers and explosions. I don't know. Like (laughs) it it happens in all of them. And and it's, I can't be mad about it at this point, but I love the first, the first portion of that series is amazing. And, um, but it leads into one of my other issues with the movie is that Wanda just becomes as obsessed with finding her kids but in the WandaVision show, everything was because Vision died. And I'm like, why isn't she True. looking for a universe where Vision is alive? True. Like, True. That seems like a big miss. Yeah. Like, I don't right. know where that part of the story went. Right. Um, right. And maybe that was a choice by Sam to focus on a different thing. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe he wanted to have that, like that motherly connection, that, that mother, mom and kid connection. And it builds a lot mm-hmm. more emotion. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was thinking they already kind of touched on vision in the Wanda vision series. So I'm going to go this route with it. I don't know, but you're right. It's it kind of a, a plot hole. Does she just, she just doesn't care about vision anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like vision's just gone. Yeah. And she mentions with? vision and it's, it's weird because the way she mentions vision is that like white vision doesn't exist. Right. You I was going to, you like, know, I was going to bring that up right now. It's also like, if she cared so much about vision in the same way that she's trying to find her kids so much, why isn't she, like you said, try her trying to find a vision from a, another universe, but also why isn't she even remotely interested in talking to finding white vision and figuring that aspect out too. She had, she, it's not even a, a thing at, as well. I found that strange. Yeah. Like a total missed plot opportunity um, to add more development to her. And maybe that was part of whatever the 40 minutes was. Be, yeah. Could, uh, could have been, um, could have been. And speaking on, on that 40 minutes, I, I felt like the beginning, we don't know where the 40 minutes could have been, you know, cut, chopped up throughout the entirety of the movie. It could have been in chunks. It could yep. have been, we have no idea, but the beginning of the movie actually felt a little rushed to me. And I felt like maybe that's where some cuts were in my opinion, that some cuts could have been in, in the beginning, in the first half of the movie. And like I keep saying, we know 40 minutes were cut. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe um, the writers or a producer, somebody attached to this movie confirmed that due to scheduling conflicts, it did not occur. But Tom Cruise as Iron Man was actually a thing. He was supposed to be in the uh-huh. movie, or at least they were considering it. I don't know how far it got, but they did confirm that due to scheduling conflicts, it didn't occur. And I mean, that makes sense to me though, because we do see the Ultron bots. So obviously his Ultron, what's it called again? Is it the Ultron initiative? I don't remember his, his, the whole thing he was doing like with the Ultron. Ultron program. Or yeah. Something. The Ultron program. Yeah. Obviously it's six, it was successful in that universe in eight, eight, three, eight, I yeah. think is the universe. So obviously an Iron Man exists and they just didn't touch on it at all, which I guess is, Yep. It, that's fine with me. If you can't showcase it, I guess that's fine. Why even touch on it? And, and, and they did introduce, um, 
Reed Richards as the as the smartest man alive. I mean, you've got Tony Stark, who's extremely smart as well. We see that the Ultron program worked, so they yep. just didn't touch on it. They could have. They could have said he died. They could have said he was busy. Um, I don't know what the case is, but they didn't touch on it. So obviously, I feel like, I mean, they didn't shoot anything, but I feel like that was at least written, and that was taken out of the script before they got to shooting it, obviously. Um, it was also confirmed, and this, oh, yeah, this, yeah, was, sure. this was shot, by the way. I don't know if you saw this. This was shot and cut from the film, so this was in the 40 minutes. Michael Fassbender's iteration of Magneto was actually in the film, and they shot scenes for it. Whoa. Yeah, and they cut oh, it. Oh, that would have been awesome. What right. the heck? <laughs> and apparently it was supposed to be like absolutely insane. Forgive me, I don't have all the notes in front of me, so I don't remember, so I'm going off of what I read and what I could remember, so forgive me if something is, is, is incorrect. But I believe they said that it was going to be an absolutely insane scene, possibly a heartbreaking scene, where um, similar to how they killed Strange, the Illuminati killed Strange, they were actually in another universe going to show how they had to kill the Scarlet Witch and Matt and that's where Magneto was in that scene. And he was telling them like they were, oh. they were going to Magneto for approval to basically murder his daughter. And he had to look at the bigger picture and accept it and okay it. And they killed her. And supposedly that's what was cut. That was a part of the 40 minutes that was, that was cut. And uh, I don't know oh, why they that cut it. So good. Some people were saying they yeah. cut it because it was too dark, but again, who knows if oh, that's okay, confirmed? But, I don't you know. know. Black- <laughs> but black but black bolt right bolt blowing his yeah. own brains out is yeah not too dark exactly that's fine we can get away with that one what i okay, know whatever. man um the, the, I, I think there there are definitely references there for iron man being around like you said the ultron robots um and like there's an empty seat on the council. Yes. Like, so maybe entire, that's uh, it's not more to implied. Chair. Maybe that's yep. implied. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. think there's an implication that there was one more member. Right. Um, there's just one other thing about the Reed Richards that I wanted to mention is that he uses a uh, very similar door tech to the time doors. Oh my God. From the I'm TVA. glad you brought that up. Cause I don't have that in my yes. notes. I told myself last night, Oh, I got to add that to my notes. But I totally <laughs> forgot. So I'm so glad you brought that up, dude. That's so yes. interesting. It's I, so cool. Yes. I love when Marvel does Kang those things. Is, yep. Cause Kang's supposed to be his kid. Right. Like in the far right. future. Yes. Like he's supposed to be a descendant. Yes. And like, so, oh my gosh, it's just crazy how yes. they connected it. I'm like, that ner- I, I get really nerdy it. when it comes to stuff like that. See, that's why, like, this is what I like about this conversation about talking about multiverse of madness, even though I gave it the rating I did and I didn't like certain things. It's not, there, along the internet, people are absolutely tearing each other apart. And I mean, whatever, do whatever you want, but we don't have to do yeah. that because I, I'm living proof right now of that I didn't really like the movie, but there are also, also are a lot of things in the movie that I was excited about. And then like, I, I get nerdy about about and that also make me excited for the future and what's yes. what's to possibly come you know even though there's yep. there's other marvel movies that i didn't like as much as others and whatnot but i was still excited about tidbits and certain things and what they set up for the future because marvel is so connected and they have so many things planned for the future so i still do get excited about about little things um such as uh where this where this may be headed man um at the end you know major spoiler alert but this whole thing is a spoiler alert at the end we see um we see strange the third eye opens and then at the very end we see uh oh what's her name it's is it is it is clea clea i think um the girl that, yeah, could, that comes Clea, in is it Clea, Clea, yep. Clea, Clea. I don't, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. I always forget. Some, something like that. Yeah, she comes out and she's actually the, um, she is the niece, I, I believe, of Dormammu, who we saw in the first Doctor Strange that movie. That is correct. Yes. yes. So we know the Dark Dimension is going to play uh, a, a role in moving forward. Dormammu will probably play a role moving forward. And I think that... Um, this will also play a role moving forward that's going to be a contribution in setting up uh, secret wars, I think. That's, and that makes me super excited. I, I really love stuff like that. I'm, I'm loving that lead up. Yeah. It's going to be great. Me too. Yeah. And I have a theory. You tell me what you think about this. Um, I have a theory. I haven't seen anybody else talk about this at all. I've spoke about it with a few people. Some people said that they didn't, they didn't necessarily agree with me. That's totally fine. And then other people were like, actually, that's a pretty interesting theory, and it is a possibility. I don't think it's comic accurate in any sort of way, but um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's still being made. It was announced that Agatha from the WandaVision series is going to be getting her own 
uh, series, her own D plus series. I believe that's still happening. I don't know if it was a hundred percent confirmed, but I believe that's still happening. If it is happening, people, some people are saying, what's the future for Wanda? This can't be it. It's kind of confirmed, but slash rumored that she's going to be getting her own solo project. I think it would be a waste if they don't use her in some way, shape or form in the future, especially with the X-Men coming to the MCU. I, and she is technically a mutant. I think it would be a waste to not tie that in some way, somehow. Um, so I think if there's going to be an Agatha series, I think there's a perfect opportunity for Agatha, I do, we have no idea what that series is going to be about from what I know. If Agatha is going to possibly be trying to find a way to get a hold of the dark hold again, w Wanda says she's, she destroys it, right? And she kind of destroys herself in the process. So nobody else could get a hold of the dark hold. I think there's a possibility just theorizing Agatha, the series could be about, if it's not a prequel, by the way, could be a prequel about Agatha that she could be trying to find a way to get a hold of the dark hold again. And in the process, I don't know if Wanda's dead. I don't know exactly what that entails, but if she's dead, resurrects Wanda or something or finds Wanda protecting the dark hold. I don't know the logistics, but she finds Wanda and that's how we get Wanda coming back. And then maybe that's mm. kind of towards the end of the Agatha series, which leads into, I don't know, God knows what, the future, Secret Wars, X-Men, something in Doctor Strange. I have no idea where it goes. I haven't, I haven't worked it out that far, but that's just a random theory that I have. Do, do you have, do you think that's possible in any, any shape, way or form? I, I a hundred percent think that's possible. Like, you know, comic book rule number one, nobody's ever really dead. Right, um, right. <laughs> you can right. never count on anybody to stay in the ground, you know. Yeah. Um, especially in this movie. Uh, yes. You know, nobody stays in the ground. In exactly. This movie. He resurrects um, <laughs> himself. Strange resurrects yeah, himself. So <laughs> it's great. Uh, it's that's probably like I think that might be my favorite bit of the film. That whole yeah. final battle is just amazing. Um, but I definitely think Wanda could get brought back by Agatha, hundred percent. Um Because. Yeah. You know, the Darkhold might have gotten destroyed in other dimensions, but True. if Wanda herself is the key to the Darkhold, then Agatha going after exactly. her body or spirit or whatever it is right. uh, could definitely bring her back. Wherever you lie on the spectrum of opinions with Multiverse of Madness, whether you liked it or whether you disliked it, I do think that the future of MCU is bright. I do think that we have to wait. There's some things that I, I have questions about. There's a couple things that I'm a little skeptical about, but I am nonetheless excited to see where it goes and hopeful that a lot of things that I've talked about in the past do come to light. So like I said, wherever you lie on the spectrum of opinions of Multiverse of Madness, I do know something that I believe that we can all agree on that are very well done and that are the projects that you are a part of the series is <laughs> that you are a part of that uh <laughs> and that's both power rangers shattered past as well as qui-gon legends man I'm a Star Wars fan. I don't believe I get the opportunity to talk about Star Wars enough. And coincidentally, recently, a few people have reached out to me actually asking me to cover some Star Wars topics. So this is very fitting. Uh, let's start with the fact that you're you're a part of NerdBot Studios' new project, a Star Wars series entitled Qui-Gon Legends, written by Colin K. Bass, which as of this recording, episode one is available on NerdBot's YouTube channel as we speak, premiered on May 4th. Uh, it's a series about the Jedi, Qui-Gon Jinn, a fan favorite. The series is said to dive deeper into the lore, Qui-Gon's untold stories with new characters, returning fan favorites, among much more, and one of those returning fan favorites, I know I dig him, I've dug his look for a long time, and that's who you are portraying, the feared Jedi Hunter, General Grievous. Tell me a little bit about your involvement in the series, man. How did you landing this role come about? Um, so I've been working with NerdBot since we started with the Shattered Past stuff right. uh, a couple of years back. I was, mm -hmm. I was, I started off with them there. Um, nice. and Elvin, uh, Elvin Zuleta, who's the leader of NerdBot, he's like the head mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. Um, he knew that I have like a ton of costumes and stuff. So he asked me to come over one day to help him design the character for Qui-Gon, mm -hmm. which is General Grievous's original look. 
nice. so we based it a lot off of uh, pieces from my Kylo Ren suit, as well as other found op, uh, materials and stuff to create the look, mm-hmm. uh, like from his home planet, like what what he would look like there, and nice. what the soldiers that he was a part of looked like as well. Um, right, right. And we based it off of sort of a blend of uh, Kylo Ren and like um, there's only one concept figure i think that's been released of that design of grievous mm-hmm. uh that's like the pre uh android design of them and we based right. it off of a blend of those two things yeah oh nice so dude that's what we're getting into is we're delving into general grievous's origins here oh in nice show as well yes yes for people that don't know man the story of grievous is actually really interesting as he was a uh, originally a kalish hailing from the planet kali where a conflict broke out a war and he's seen as a very skilled warrior amongst his people and then following uh the death of his female counterpart at the hands of the huck i believe i'm pronouncing that correctly uh he invaded and conquered their home world thus leading them to turn to the galactic republic whom forced the Kali back to their own world and let them starve. And then Grievous set on helping his people in the process. He was bombed and left critically injured, thus leading to the reconstructed cyborg Grievous, who was used as a weapon for Count Dooku. So that's basically kind of what you're going to be. I know you can't touch on certain things and you said what you said, so tread lightly if you need to, but that's basically kind of where you're picking up here is that is that what's happening still he's still pre he's still pre android so he hasn't been uh exploded or anything like that yet so i think there will be a blend of the stories type of thing but we'll have to see where it goes if you guys yeah if you guys want to find out more tune into episode one so we can get those views so we can get episode two made yes yes and that's that's what's gonna make it happen that's what i was gonna ask episode one is out now so but i believe you kind of just answered it so you haven't filmed any other uh scenes for grievous yet no, no, just the, just that initial scene. That's all we've nice. shot with Grievous so far. So yeah. um, I'm excited to shoot more in the future, though, because the, the help design this character and make him come to life is just super cool. I wonder if they'll need any assistance. They've been tasked with apprehending a team of mercenaries on Bespin. They're led by a Kalish warlord. I can't wait for this and 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 I won't spoil anything but just trust me you guys watch episode 1 of Qui-Gon Legends and you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. It is a, it's fan service for sure, man. So far in uh your acting ventures, it seems that you're kind of on a roll with playing more so villains, dare I say, if I'm not mistaken, as you're also a part of Crimson Vision Studios Power Rangers series Shattered Past. And I quote, the morphing grid may be shattered, but hope is not lost. Sam, the SPD Omega Ranger, is sent back in time to stop the legendary Tommy Oliver from becoming the evil Lord Draken. With his um, Omega Morpher teleportation powder, powers, powders, <laughs> his teleportation powders, his <laughs> teleportation powers, and help from Power Rangers throughout time, he will try to save the future by fixing the shattered past and if i'm not mistaken you portray the white ranger thus leading to lord draken as well um i've seen posts where you discussed how great of a time that you've been having on set of this series so besides the love that you have for portraying these beloved characters in general is there something to be said about portraying a villain that can bring another aspect of adventure to acting uh yeah 100 percent. i think um getting portrayed to portray the villains is almost more fun sometimes than portraying the heroes because right. you really get to let loose and just go and go nuts. Yeah. Um, which is really fun. Like it's, it's a great time to be able to just like ham up the ham it up and eat the scenery and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, which is one of the main things I try to do channeling Draken is that uh, like, you know, he's, he's, he's a power ranger originally, but he is a classic, power rangers villain in the same vein yeah so with the way that they're over exaggerated most of the time i think i try to bring that as well to draken and i love doing that stuff it's great how is it acting with uh with your face so covered i mean are there obstacles to to overcome being that you can't express facial emotion or i'm certain that you have to portray a lot more body language than than something else you know than than another role 100 percent um there's I, I I have experience portraying uh, emotions and stuff through just body language because I used to be a Disneyland resort, um, so I have a lot of experience doing it there. So bringing that 
that work to this really transfers easily for me. So um, acting with my face covered uh, and everything, it, it can be a little tough, like for like the fight scenes and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, Cause you know, visibility and range of motion right. and stuff is a little different, but uh, in terms of the acting side of it, I think I, I made the jump pretty, pretty well. Right. Yeah. It, it comes off. It came off very well from what I've seen. I, I don't see any issues at all. And then, I mean, it's kind of just uh, the, the norm for Power Rangers in general, because oftentimes when they're in suit, obviously, you know, their faces are covered and in Power Rangers through all throughout, you know, the history of the Power Rangers, they're very animated with their with their movements and their hand movements. So it's it's a common place for for a Power Rangers. Series. They gotta be. Yeah, they got to be. Exactly. Did you yeah. uh, your your White Ranger cosplay and your Lord Draken cosplay? Did you did you have these cosplays before you were cast in the series? or was this something that you got you know for the series the white ranger cosplay i had before i got cast mm-hmm. and that was actually the original reason i got into the show yeah um because i had just finished the new chest shield and then colin bass hit me up and said hey i love your white ranger costume you need a white ranger for the show when like can you be here on this like this saturday oh, nice. i was like yeah of course like let's <laughs> let's do it let's shoot um so it was like within a week i was casted and in the in the production um and we went out to to a location and we shot a bunch of footage uh and it was a great time and um afterwards uh colin was very interested in bringing lord draken fully into the show so i offered to build my own lord draken suit as long as i still got to play him in the series and Colin was a hundred percent on board. So I got to build that suit over the course of the next like a uh, couple months. And after it was done, we filmed uh, episode four and then uh, Draken doesn't appear in episode five, but there will be some more stuff happening in episode six. So pretty stoked for that. It's going to be a good time. Oh, well, 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 what do we have here? Yeah, not the duo I was expecting to see. And nonetheless, two more rangers to kill. Not in this timeline, Draken. This version of you is nothing special, Sam. The only reason you survived this long is because you're really good at running. That's not heroism. That's cowardice. Once again, just like uh, Qui-Gon Legends, man, Shattered Past is so well done. And as of this recording, Power Rangers Shattered Past episodes one through five are available right now on Crimson Vision Studios' YouTube account. Uh, And Crimson Vision is brought to you by, once again, by Colin K. Bass, as well as Sean C. Swanson. Their projects are absolutely awesome. Make sure you're following and subscribed to stay up to date. Um, They're so well done. I can't stress it enough. I, I, I enjoyed myself very, very much when watching the Shattered Past as well as uh, the Qui-Gon Legends series. And I'm so excited to further see uh, the Qui-Gon Legends series, man. I th- it, it, That one really, really impressed me. It's not, it, I'm not saying anything bad about Shattered Past or anything, but I'm just saying a Star Wars series, the way that you guys went about it, Man, it really, really impressed me. It's very well done. The special effects, everything is very well done. And I, I'm, I'm super, super stoked about that. Um, I want to talk to you about your cosplay, man. But before we talk to you about your cosplays, I think this is a perfect time to break up the monotony. And let's get into this week's Cosplay of the Week. Oh, yes. And this week's Cosplay of the week is none other than. Ha, I could do this all day. Throwing it up on the screen? No! The Mad Sparrow, spelled exactly how it sounds, and this is absolutely insanely phenomenal. The Mad Sparrow on Instagram, it is zombie Captain America. It's so well done. I've had this in my vault for a a decent amount of time now, and I've been wanting to feature it as a cosplay a week for a decent amount of time now. And here we are, dude. Uh, The caption says, what if zombie Captain America? And the photo is done by Carlos underscore Colon. I believe that's how you pronounce it. C-O-L-O-N 16851. And it was taken at PR Comic Con, which is in Puerto Rico. This is absolutely so well done, dude. Um, Mad Sparrow, I love this. The helmet is, you know, everything about this is accurate. Uh, you got the A on the helmet for for Captain America. You know, the helmet is dope. I love the uh, the eyes on the helmet with the um, I don't know what you would call that. The little uh, the blue right there under the eyes. It's like a, it's like a textured textured right there. I love that. The contacts, I would assume, with the white contacts, the zombie contacts, absolutely beautifully done. The facial features, is that a uh, 
Is that a mask, Mad Sparrow? I want to know. Is that is that a mask? Is it all connected? Is the is the helmet and and the, and the facial features there connected? Is it prosthetics? How, how'd you do that? I'm assuming it's probably some sort some form of prosthetics. What do you think? Yeah, it's either prosthetics or it is just an attached thing to the mask. But what the what? It's so form fitted, though. I know it looks. Yeah, so I well think it done. might be a prosthetic almost. Yeah, it's great. Like, it's great. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I want to throw up a second photo here. Uh, this one's also from Puerto Rico Comic Con twenty twenty two. He also says in the caption that after skipping two years, it's good to be back. So I'm awesome. I'm glad that you had a great time, man. This is even this is even crazier, dude. This this showcases the entire cosplay, and you see that one of the arms, the um, the clothing for the arms is ripped ripped off, and it's showing your actual bare arm, but all zombied up. You know, it's uh, got that whitish gray skin tone. You know, like a zombie, obviously. <laughs> and uh it's got a little bit of like red going on there maybe a little bit of decay or dried blood who knows exactly the suit is looking all decayed it's absolutely awesome and then you're walking the stance with the with the with the um the ankle bent you know perfect zombie stance your head tilted hunched over slightly bent the captain america shield the leg a uh, dragging the foot dragging it's absolutely dope man i love it all the way from the helmet down to the boots and the captain america shield this is great I'm sure you were getting a lot of looks and a lot of people asking you to take pictures, man. Uh, I really dig this. And I thought that it was pretty fitting for uh, part of the theme of this episode being that we're talking about multiverse of madness, had zombie strange in there, uh, you know, Marvel in general, what if zombie captain America, this is absolutely dope, man. And uh, you guys, please go follow the mad sparrow at the mad sparrow. Exactly how it sounds on Instagram because the mad sparrow, your captain America, zombie captain America cosplay of the week for me is amazing <laughs> yes all right also this week's episode is brought to you by legacy comics a comic book company built to foster and maximize the impact of independent creatives legacy comics is the brainchild of former nbc editor the minds behind the game's author voice actor and creator of the conjury comic patrick hickey jr alongside comic book artist writer and podcaster john Svedesi. legacy comics originally had a kickstarter now closed that reached its goal in less than five hours the comics imprint will be bringing you readings and arts in the form of athos a super superhero hailing from a race of legendary agents who created mankind. The Job, a wrestler who will do what it takes to get his big break. Kroom, based on the indie game of the same name, a planet decimated by an invading alien force. The Legend of the Night Owl, a mother and son duo out to clean up Brooklyn with fists and fury. And of course, Condry, a homeless vagabond seeking revenge for his father's untimely passing at the hands of the Lopez game you can pre-order books today at legacycomics.com and that's legacy comics comics with an x at the end and make sure to follow on ig and stay up to date at legacy underscore comics yes. um all right man your cosplays Let's talk about him a little bit, dude. Um, All right. I, I had the opportunity to work with you on the Batman shoot that we did, and the photos were done by Art Hero Photo, Art.Hero Photo on Instagram, which one of those photos, um, and your Batman cosplay in general, there was two photos, but one of those photos was the one that we did together. It was a secondary highlight during when I featured you as a cosplay of the week, so I obviously dig your Batman, um, but you have a lot of epic cosplays that I admire, man, and I mean that, working with a lot of skilled photographers to bring the artistic vision to life, such as your amazing Spider-Man cosplay. It's, um, well, amazing, <laughs> pun intended. And uh, <laughs> I'm throwing up a couple photos. They're up on the screen right now for the people that are watching, if you're watching on YouTube or Spotify. Uh, and these are shot and edited by at Life's A Beach 1918 on Instagram. And uh, these are absolutely amazing, dude. I mean, and I, this time, no pun intended. These are actually really, really well done. Uh, the suit, I mean, the ba the background in general with the uh, with the Spidey, the Spidey symbol, the Spidey logo going down as your backdrop there for this photo, absolutely amazing. You've got the stance down. You're standing, you know, with that heroic kind of stance. The suit is absolutely amazing, man. 
I mean, absolutely phenomenal. And I'm throwing up another one on the screen. And this this one's uh, with the Spidey, the web background going on there in, in, in the background. And you're, 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 you got the Spidey stance down, you know, like a spider. This is, this is amazing, dude. I mean, this is amazing. And Andrew Garfield is one of my favorite Spider-Men. Uh, this suit is one of my favorite suits, actually. And I know I'm kind of in the minority with that. because I know a lot of people didn't technically like this suit, but I actually always loved this suit. Um, being that you cosplayed as Andrew's iteration, is that because Andrew is your favorite Spider-Man or did you just like the suit design? Why'd you choose this version? Of the three so far that we have, yeah, Andrew is by far my favorite. I loved his iteration of the movies. Uh, I've I've been a huge fan of Andrew Garfield like since he was on Doctor Who like way way back. Um, so so like I think I thought he just brought such a good life to Peter Parker as a character, and not in like a cheesy way like how uh, Toby Maguire does it, or in like more of a teenager way like Tom Holland. But he just has a different level of realness to him. Uh, that he brings like a rawness to the part uh, that I really, really appreciate. And this, this was one of my first cosplays ever, like amazing Spider-Man one. Like this is like one of my first major oh, no ones. Way. Really? I remember I didn't know buying that. this. Yeah. I remember buying this suit back in like 2014, 2015 and oh, starting wow. out at wonder cons with this one in particular. Um, <laughs> so revisiting it, with all of these new photos was such a blast to do. Um, and yeah, I'm still they really, really improving in the photos. Yeah, They're so well done. Thank you. And I'm still constantly improving and modifying and stuff. So I do actually, mm -hmm. I am working currently oh, on a nice. new face shell uh, nice. for the suit. Nice. And this is a face shell designed by Heroes Time, printed out by my buddy uh, Meticulous Matt on Instagram. Um, and the lenses pop out and everything. And I'm really excited to get this one finished. So awesome. Uh, but uh, that's, yeah. that's going to look I, great. I also, yeah. You, you and did, growing you, up, I got told. Go ahead. Go ahead. My, my, no, no. Go, I was, no, no. was going to comment on the eyes since you brought up the eyes in, in this photo yes. too. The eyes are slightly different than the actual movie, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah, that design's a little a little different a little, than what I the actually, actual film is. Yeah. I actually kind of prefer the eyes that you did here as opposed to the one in the movie. Yeah. Because I, right. I love cool. the movie cool. suit. I always love the movie suit, but the eyes I wasn't entirely sold on. Like the way that the eyes were in the color. I think maybe it was the color. The fact that they were a yellow. Be. I'm not sure, but... I mean, I like the suit as a whole, but the eyes were the only thing where I was like, I don't know if I'm feeling those eyes a hundred percent, but I actually, I dig the way that you did the eyes as opposed to the original in the movie. It actually works even better. And maybe it's just because there's more black around it. They're still yellow, but there's more black around it. it so it pops a little bit more. I be. don't know, but I just, I dig them and I just wanted to say that, but, but go ahead. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, that's, that's kind of what I tried to do was stay away from like, the sunglasses reflective nature yeah. of the lenses from the movie and kind of have right. them look a little more traditional in right. terms of like a Spider-Man look, but still carry those same colors. And you pulled um, that off. I think it's so interesting that the front, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 It, exactly. You <laughs> um, pulled it off. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, uh, I've always loved this design and growing up, uh, especially around when the, the time the movie came out, mm -hmm. I was getting told left and right that I was, that I looked like Andrew Garfield. Nice. Um, so that's why I was like, then I got to cosplay him. Gotta I got to cosplay Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait. And I, I wore this, this Spider-Man suit to multiple just first night showings and stuff of all the older Marvel movies. Yeah. I think all the way up to like Ant-Man one. Oh, so, nice, dude. <laughs> yep. so it's one of my favorites, man. One of my favorites. Yeah. In, in, insects got to support insects, man. Spider-Man and Ant-Man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. The bugs got to stick exactly. together. Exactly. <laughs> they got to stick together, man. Keeping with Marvel themed cosplays, dude, your Iron Man cosplay is an accomplishment in itself. It looks absolutely great. I think pulling off an Iron Man cosplay, in my opinion, and having it look realistic, properly fitted and proportionate is always a, a feat in itself. And I think you pulled that off flawlessly here i mean you also do uh cosplay prop making you mentioned it earlier you also do uh cosplay prop making you build some of your own and or parts of your own cosplays such as what you did with this can you walk me through and walk everybody through a little bit of the process of when you were making this cosplay come to life did it take a while for iron man yes uh iron man has took me about 
oh, just over a year to Damn. complete the full suit. Um, wow. Yeah. It, it, and, and that's with multiple iterations of different parts and stuff. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, uh, measure once cut twice. That's like the whole, the whole thing. Right. Um, so measuring off the first time, definitely a lot of parts didn't fit and the initial suit didn't, uh, certain parts didn't quite look right. Um, but as I figured out how to adjust those and change like, uh, like, like scaling on certain parts and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot about how to craft with, uh, EVA foam, especially cause that's what the whole suit is made out of. Yeah. Um, and it just, it was a big learning process, but, uh, it was definitely a challenge and I really enjoyed doing it though. It was really fun to build the suit and just whenever I show up at like an event or a birthday mm -hmm. party or something in it and the, like the, like whoever's there just like, they just lose Mind it. Blown, it yeah. I know that I did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Does it take a, <laughs> does, does it take a lot to get in this suit? Is it, is there, is it a lot to, is there a lot of pieces? Like how do you, how do you piece it together when you get in this suit? There's quite a few parts. Uh, it's, it's, um, we got the cod piece first and then the legs go on next. And those mm -hmm. are separated into everything kind of just slides on for the most part. Um, nice. but you got the cod piece, then the legs, then you got the ab section as a separate piece. Mm -hmm. And then the chest slides on over that. And I have a <laughs> neck seal as a separate piece. Damn. Um, yeah. and then the arms are the shoulder pads are attached. And then we got biceps and forearms. Uh, I 3d printed the gloves for the suit. Nice. Um, so I could put light up, uh, pads in the center on the hand. Nice. Um, so those look really good. Uh, and then, um, this, the helmet itself is this one thing I'm still working on modifying because mm -hmm. it's just the Marvel legends helmet right now. It, uh, it, it looks which good, is a great though. helmet. Yeah. It looks yep. great though, but I definitely want to make it. I want to make it move. You oh, know? I got you. I got you. Yeah. Um, is this, your, yeah, most, yeah, is this your, your most complicated cosplay? Would you say it's your most complicated one? Yeah, I would say so. I yep. had a feeling. Because of feeling. just how many pieces and how much it took to put together and all right. the scaling and also how it all attaches. Because um, I use a lot of uh, clips and belts and stuff in there to keep everything kind of together once it's right. on me. Right. So. Aside from... Uh from your, your, your Batman cosplay on the DC side of things, the DC cosplay I'd like to highlight is your wonderful, and I mean it, man, your absolutely wonderful Superman cosplay. You make a great Superman, dude. It's uh, very menacing to any villains that are headed towards Clark's, <laughs> Clark Kent's way, man. Uh, the look in your facial features, dude, they're so on point, and some of these photos that I'm going to be throwing up on the screen are done by Art Hero Photo. That's art.herophoto on Instagram once again. Uh, the red glowing eyes... The suit looks great. That old school style Superman, the classic symbol, the yellow belt looks amazing. The red shorts on the outside. I mean, you nailed it, dude. You absolutely oh. nailed it. And when you and Leo get together, that's Art Hero Photo. When you and Leo get together, you guys come out with such amazing content, dude. You really bring it to life, man. And I want to throw up another photo um, where you're using the, uh, the laser eyes, the heat vision, shooting up into the sky, killing a flock of birds in the process, but it's okay. We'll let it slide. I'm not PETA. Uh, <laughs> what about the uh, old school look of Superman, the comic look even, uh, piqued your interest most? Like, why, why did you choose to go that route? Um, Superman has been one of my favorite superheroes like ever since I was a little kid, um, since my dad introduced me to comic books and stuff. Uh, I think Superman might have been the first superhero movie I ever watched, like the original oh, wow. Christopher Reeve, yeah. uh, Richard Donner film from yeah. the 70s, because um, it's it's my dad's favorite superhero movie. And so it transferred to me that it's mine. Um, and like, I, I just I'm so attached to that look of Superman and how Christopher Reeve pulled it off that I wanted to try and emulate that, like because uh, I love Man of Steel, uh, but it this the classic suit is just where it's at for me. I don't know. It's, and it, it looks it's phenomenal. So, it's so simple. Yeah. yeah. It, Thank it, you, man. It looks oh. great. And, and the photo with the, with the heat vision shooting up into the sky, man, Leo, if you're watching this right now, Leo, man, or if this becomes a promo clip and you see it on Instagram, phenomenal photo, phenomenal edit. Like seriously, you know, Leo always is going out of his way. I got to shout him out because he's the one always going out of his way to really find us good locations and take the time to really make the photos count. Um, 
And if we don't find the location right off the bat, we'll, we'll just wander around and have a good time until we find the right spot. Um, and, and just, he's great. Uh, and his editing is just amazing. Like I, I love the way he edits his photos. It really is. These are phenomenal. You guys make sure you're following art hero photo on Instagram. That's art dot hero photo, uh, for all his cosplay, uh, fo- photography. It's absolutely dope. Since we're talking about Superman, dude, uh, I want to know real quick, how, how do you feel about, uh, you know, do, do you want Henry Cavill to come back as Superman? I mean, what do you want? Do you want a Man of Steel 2? Would you want a continuance of Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League? What would you want to happen most? Or just a whole, reboot the whole thing and start fresh? Wh- where, where do you lie on all that? I absolutely love Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I Me love too. Man of Steel. And I, I love all, all the stuff that came out of Zack Snyder's era. Just, I'm a huge fan of. So I want more of that. So to answer those questions, all of the above, like get Henry Cavill back <laughs> yeah. in the suit, get uh, get him back on set, mm-hmm. have him flying around, doing all the yes. stuff. Um, yes, I agree. Because like, because Zach was hitting the right tone with Justice League. I, I think know so. He went really dark with Batman v Superman. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he he course corrected very well with Justice League. He listened to the criticism. Yeah. He knew what he was doing to change that movie up and make it better. Yeah. Um, and it just sucks that it got so nerfed by the studio. I, I know, man. He got removed from it before he could finish it. It's um, also but sad. I'm happy that it's I'm happy it's out. I'm happy we're able to see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me too. It's also it's also sad. I always thought this. I understand, you know, Hollywood, you know, things get cutthroat in entertainment. You got to do what you got to do. There's a lot of money involved. But like the reason that he had to step away was because his 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 do- YouTube YouTube frowns upon the word that I'm 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 going to I, I want to use. So I'm going to use a different word. But his uh, his, his daughter, you know, um, how do I say it without YouTube? They get they push videos back if you use the word. His daughter unalived herself. And I'm not trying to make a joke out of this. <laughs> I'm trying to find a yeah, different yeah, word no. because if I use the actual word, they tend to like push your videos back and they don't they don't like that word. But like it was a serious situation that he had to step away from. It's not like it was he got sick or like something happened and they were just like, no, we got to keep moving. And lately they just absolutely demolished his vision in that movie. And it's kind of <laughs> yep. sad. I mean, I get that business is business. I don't know exactly how he felt about it. I'm sure he was more concerned about his family and his daughter, you know, but I, w- I wonder if he was like, even in his mind, it was like, damn, you guys like, it's not like I just stepped away for fun. Like, look what happened. Like we couldn't have, yeah. we couldn't have come to an agreement. We couldn't have figured something out. And then I, I also know, I don't want to really back them up because I think it was shitty of them, but I also get like the actors too have schedules. They got other movies they yeah. have to go do. I understand there is a lot to it, but I feel like there just, there could have been a better way to go about it. You know? Yeah. That was my, I, uh, I, my take I, on it. I yeah. agree. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, but I, I want, I definitely want Henry Cavill back. I think he's probably the, like, he's right up there with Chris Reeve for me is like, yeah, same dude. Same. The best people to portray Superman. Right. He's just, he's just so passionate and he knows so much about the character. Yes. And I'm just like, of all the people that you could pick to play Superman, he's, he's the one. Like you need him to keep playing. Yep. Like, yep. I agree. How, how do you how, how do you feel about yeah. like um, the rumors? Having heard some things about the. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Actually, I think you're about to ask me about what I was going to say. So finish your question. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah. hmm. How do you feel about the rumors and the possibilities of Henry Cavill coming into the MCU? Uh, uh, rumors going around or it's mm. possible that he could be either Hercules or Captain Britain. And it was actually confirmed that he did take a meeting with Marvel. We just don't know what happened in that meeting. Well, if he comes into the MCU, I think I'd like him as Captain Britain over... Hercules, because I feel like Captain Britain has has a little more staying power. Right, um, I think so too. Because Hercules, I f- I feel like feel like we're gonna see Hercules and a lot of other Greek gods maybe not make it through Love and Thunder. Yes, I was gonna say the um, same thing, and that's yeah, actually another. So, well, it's not a rumor; it's just speculative talk amongst amongst fans saying that it is maybe that meeting that he took with Marvel was to appear as Hercules in Thor: Love and Thunder. Mm. And I mean, I mm. under I, I get where people could get that, but I don't know if they would, you know, being that the God Butcher is going to be in this, just like we, I've said, I said earlier, you just said it now, a lot of gods are probably going to die in this. They're not going to waste Henry Cavill's star power on one, one movie where he dies to the God Butcher. You know, I don't see they that happening. No, 
but there's I don't no see that way. Happening. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. Not at all. He's a money maker. Exactly. Like, they, like, and also he's he's a very good stand-in for Chris Evans. Exactly. If they need a new a new exactly. big guy, exactly. For, to lead the team. Listen, I'm sorry I'm so hyper. It's just my first time as team leader. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, well, while we are going to get ready to wrap up here before we do so, man, um, what are your, what are your, you mentioned a couple things here and there. What are your, what are your cause plans? Do you have any cosplay plan, plans for the future that you want to bring to light here and now? Anything that you have in the works or even something that you've just been rummaging in your mind that you want to do? What's the future of cosplay look like for you right now? I got, I got some good, I got some good ones coming. Uh, I've been working <laughs> a lot with this company called X, X Coaster. Uh, they helped me out. They sent me a peacemaker helmet this past uh, couple weeks to review and that helmet came out great. Um, head over to my Instagram page to see the review. Uh, and that was a great helmet and they're sending me where right now they're sending me a new moon Knight helmet too. Nice. Um, So I'm going to be reviewing that very soon. And I've been, yeah. And I've been working very closely with them on, uh, designing, uh, their moon Knight suit. Like I've, I was able to take tons of photos and stuff at the premiere of the actual in-person costume. So we have tons of reference pictures and they completely reworked it after seeing all those photos. So I'm just waiting to see updates on that. And, uh, hopefully I'll have that suit soon. Nice. I'll be able to dress up. I'm stoked Um, for that dude. And I am working on a new, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am working on something new for uh, Shattered Past. I Ooh. can't talk about it right now, mm-hmm. um, but there is something coming. That's um, going to be interesting. All I'll say is that maybe I won't play. Yeah, I won't. I maybe won't play a bad guy forever. Oh, nice. Nice. See you step into a different role, man. Speaking of that, perfect transition. I'm Mm -hmm. glad you set that up. Uh, (laughs) You've got your cosplay on one (laughs) hand, acting on another. Can we expect to see you in anything else acting wise? Are you working on anything else? Is this something that you're going to continue pursuing? Oh, hundred percent. Yes. I will be in more episodes of Shattered Past going forward. Nice. Um, Maybe with a little more visibility of of this guy right here. (laughs) Um, So it's, it's, it's going to be a good time. Things are on the horizon for Shattered Past that I'm really excited about. Um, There's also, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go check out over on Honest Trailers. Uh, I was just in their Honest uh, theme song, their very Mm -hmm. first video. I played Batman in their honest theme song, uh, kissed by a bat. So (laughs) (laughs) go go check that one out. It's Uh, amazing. It is hilarious. I loved working on that with the whole team over there at, uh, at, at screen junkies and stuff. They're Mm -hmm. all wonderful people. Um, and I'm really hoping to work with them more on more stuff in the future. So I will probably be showing up over there a couple more times nice. when they do more live action stuff. So nice. Super excited. Nice. Well, man, I am going to get ready to let you go. Uh, this was a great time, dude. Uh, if, if there's anything that you want to say, the floor is yours. Say absolutely anything you want to say, any shout outs that you want to, you want to give anything. The spotlight is yours. Big shout outs. I'll just get them out of the way. I want to shout out my buddy, Leo art hero photo at all times. He's like one of the best photographers I know. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's just super great. Uh, shout out to like, you know, Marvel for creating all this stuff and yes. allowing me to go to all these really cool premieres and things. Yeah, super uh, cool. They're always so, so nice and helpful with getting, getting us out to that stuff. Um, shout out to you, of course, oh, Side thank Project you, man. Podcast, uh, <laughs> for bringing me on. Thank uh, you, man. This has been an absolute blast to, to expand and expound upon what I do and, um, just bring it out to the world. I, I love it. Uh, yeah. and if there's anybody out there aspiring to do anything like this, like cosplay wise, the only thing I could say is just, just do it. Just find your character, yes. find the one you like, and just, just start, just start doing it, man. Cause, uh, it's a blast. It's yeah. a great time. So I, I, I have a great time with it. So That's join awesome. the, join the world. Yes. Into it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please go follow Corruption Cosplay on Instagram at corruption underscore cosplay. And that's K O R U P T I O N underscore cosplay with a K as well. Also follow his podcast, Marvel Talk Cast, because he does have his po- a podcast of his own. Stay up to date with the series that he's a part of, both of them, uh, Shattered, the Shatter Pass Project, as well as the recent Qui Gon Legends by subscribing on YouTube to Crimson Vision Studios as well as Nerdbot Studios. Along 
alongside following them on Instagram. Same names on Instagram as well. Man, Jake, it has been an awesome time, dude. I'm glad we finally got to do this. Uh, we covered a lot of topics here, so sorry if we were running through things fast, you guys. Um, and I can't wait to have you on again, dude. Uh, something that I've talked about with uh, with Amit and with uh, Leo as well is maybe getting all of you guys on at the same time, whether it be via Zoom, because we're all we're all in the same state, but some of us are further from others than than others, you know. So whether it be in person, whether it be on Zoom, whatever whatever it could be. Um, we could all come together, talk about the shoot that we did, maybe go a little bit in, more in depth, talk about that crazy lady. I won't say anything else because maybe I'll save it as a uh, oh, man. as a nice little a little <laughs> thing to talk about on the episode. Uh, uh, but the crazy lady, yeah, right <laughs> the crazy lady during the shoot. Um, and then uh, I know that I won't say I won't say any spoilers, but I know that Amit and Leo are working on something special. And I did talk to them about maybe we could get all of us on Ooh. at the same time when they're done working on something, whenever that comes to fruition. So that way we could also talk about that project that they're working on as well. And I think it'd be a great time, man. So I will, of course, keep you updated on that whenever that happens. I'm sure they will too. And keep everybody else stay updated on when they could uh, make that happen. So thank you for coming, dude. I really appreciate it. Um, and everybody tuning in, thank you for watching, for liking, for commenting, for sharing, for doing all of those things you should do over on youtube.com slash side project podcast. When you rate and review, you like and do those things, go ahead and people elbow that subscribe button and make sure you subscribe because I think like, mm, 60 70 something percent of people that watch are not subscribed so people elbow people's elbow that subscribe button and make sure that you're uh subscribed and get the notifications and do all that good stuff thank you for watching as well over on spotify if you do and listening on apple and google and all those things you listen on when you rate and review and you thumbs up and do all those the beautiful things you do i appreciate it from the bottom of my heart if you're looking for me you can find me at IG hates chazzy on instagram and everything else you need to find me on is right here on the screen you can go right there it's not tappable it's not tappable but they are in the descriptions, though, so you can click it in the description. <laughs> if you're looking for the podcast as a whole on Instagram, you can find it on Instagram at Side Project Podcast, and that's Project with a K. And I just realized as I'm looking at myself in the camera that I never turned on the eyes for the Spawn helmet or the Punisher helmet that I have here. Haven't done that in a long time. Uh, makes me very sad. I like those eyes. I like those eyes on. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in, man. I'm going to get out of here. Have a good time. <laughs>